Well, I've got a load of work to do today, but um, since I can't seem to settle down to it, I'll just mention a couple of things and then I'll get on with it. I've got to do a filler today in the bottling industry and it's a technical manual. So that'll be good. I look forward to that. I enjoy. I do enjoy my work. But I was meditating on the matter again of women and and the relationship between men and women. These are things that I think they're quite important uh, topics. I think, and I'm probably going to say some things which will, you know, get me into all sorts of trouble. But so be it. I, I'm not really bothered. You know, I, I don't mind what people think, I'm sure that people think that it's nonsense. I try, I'm try, I try to speak from biblical principles as far as I understand them, and that must necessarily be limited. Um, but it does seem to me that, you know, women have kind of been very much persuaded by the narrative builders to eschew their natural God-given role, role, I would say. Uh, of course, you know, people don't believe in God, then th th we're already <laughs> too different <laughs> not to worry about it, you know. But hear me out. Um, they're, kind of, they're more natural roles, shall we say, or I, well, I would say they're God-given role, but you, know, you could argue you could argue natural role. I think you can argue natural role if you look at uh, child rearing and survival of the species. I think there are some areas where, um, you know, sort of Darwinists and biologists can almost start to um, have a bit of a love in around there. I'm not sure about it, but I would say the biblical role of a woman, you know. And the Bible's quite clear about it, that a woman was made as a helper for man. That's quite a, you know, people have, I think, I think women have, um, read that and, and, and balked at it maybe lately but it wouldn't have been that way in the olden days you see there was a completely different conception um, a completely different conception and people also of course in our modern world don't understand the holiness of women is another aspect that has been greatly um, besmirched and, and uh, a matter that has been really lost to understanding. One of the reasons is because of Maryism, which is the Catholic Church's super elevation of the mother of Jesus Christ. And the other reason is the Protestant church shrinking in horror from regarding Mary in any way whatsoever and treating her as just another believer. But she was the mother of Jesus Christ. She's not just another believer. I'm sorry. Whatever she is. So I tend to view her as an archetype. I believe that Psalm 51 speaks of, uh, speaks of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And I just think, I, I, I certainly don't, you know, kneel before her or worship or anything like that. But I do love women, and I wonder really whether this archetype has been somehow misplaced because now women are just, they, they seem to have quite lost the plot. I'm sorry, <laughs> ladies. I've spoken to many of my brethren, brethren recently, and we've talked about certain issues, and this just comes up that, you know, there's just absolute chaos in the realm. And... Uh, Order needs to be brought. I'm sorry. We've got to get back onto an even keel here. And it is our job as the men to bring you young ladies back into line. To help you. To help you achieve your holy purpose. Because that is sacred before God. Of course, you know, this is a, you know it's a religious, a very religious approach to the to the to the matter. I do understand it, but you know, the idea that's being being promulgated in the truth movement and in many sort of forward-looking movements really is to say that well, you know, men and women, it's just a construct. 
you know we're just people we have to reach out to one another in love and ultimately we're just mates trying to get on and get the job done together what you know why are you even mentioning men and women and all that old-fashioned and nonsense and of course many of those people will be separated from their spouse because of all sorts of problems that arise i mean i hardly need to list the problems of maintaining a marriage that's based on you know false precepts anyway so i mean the divorce is very very widespread and the couples that stay together i mean they still have huge problems of course because they become you know people start to look at them and, and whisper they wonder well i mean is she happy is he happy you know what's going on under the you know behind the curtains Ooh. <laughs> It's very difficult, you know, in the, in the current climate because we've lost, we don't know how to behave any longer, you know. And the same is men as, as, as well as women. I mean, because when I see men appeasing, um, greatly misbehaving women and just kneeling before them and allowing themselves to be walked over, I'm sorry, by my brothers, but you're not really setting a very good example. You really aren't. You know, I mean, women are beautiful and uh, men will, will do anything for them, really. That's always been the way. But we do have to draw the line at some point. And I think the point has is long past, I'm, I'm afraid. And I'll say that, of course, mainly to my brothers. We have to start drawing a few lines and bring everything back into a godly order, you see. Um, women have been you know maligned i think by taking them away from biblical principles biblical principles biblical principles apply to men and women but that those that are addressed to women are more subtle we have to look at them carefully and see what the bible is teaching us We have to look carefully at Abigail, who took control from her husband, Nabal, because he was an evil man. And he was so arrogant, he couldn't hear good advice. And she saved the day. And he was struck down by God ten days later. This is an important lesson for a woman. I mean, she must understand that while it's perfectly fine to do as your husband requires as, as far as you can and, and, and to be um, a dutiful wife, if the husband is wicked, uh, all bets are off, as it were. You have a, a godly duty to, to act, actually. Um, if the the husband is wicked before God, you see, because you're protect she was protecting her household because the his inaction would have produced a slaughter. All of them would have been killed had she not acted with such strength and courage. Well, the position of women in the Bible is uh, is a complex matter, you see, and it's not discussed very much in the churches or either, really, because they're absolutely obsessed with trying to restore women to a position of power and authority they're embarrassed about the you know the woman is that man's helper and being made out of a rib i mean honestly you poor ladies you know but that is what the bible does say and, and, and i'm afraid we do have to take note of, note of it and of course we should it's very very important that we understand the genesis of woman and what she's, you know, what she's here for. Very important. But uh, it would be a very foolish man that thinks that, you know, all power and authority has been given to the men and the women have none whatsoever. Oh, my dear, though. <laughs> I, I'm sure nobody really does think that, but, I mean, that would be very foolish, of course. Oh, yes. The women have great power. But they cede it, you see, to their husbands, as it were. It is a, 
It is the tradition. They um, defer to their husbands. And because men love women beyond almost words, they are given really everything that they could possibly dream of. I mean, they can they have ex access if they want to be independent. They're allowed to be independent. If they want to go here, they go there. They, they, there is really a loving husband, I think, will open his hand and his heart before his wife in every single manner possible unto him. But for the women then to assume that they have thus acquired the power to to behave as they please without any form of deference whatsoever. This is going, this is taking the ball and running a little bit too far, you young ladies, I'm sorry. That's not how it works. It really isn't. So, you know, we must be very careful about these matters. They're important. They're very important. And we need to re-establish. When there's no loving relationships forming between men and women, we both of us suffer. Of course we do. We both of us suffer. Um, there was a book published in the 1970s, was it? A woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. I'm sure you might have heard the title. It's quite well known. I don't know who wrote it one of the feminist, you know, icon persons. You know, not that I, you know, I mean, I'm perfectly happy to, you know, I, I, my wife is an ardent feminist, honestly. I've spoken to many of these people. Women can do far more than they're given credit for. Of course they can. I mean, the Bible, if you read, you know, if you read the, the 31st chapter of Proverbs, the woman is very, very industrious and very independent indeed. You know, buying lands and, and, and setting up businesses and all the rest of it. I mean, she doesn't seem like a, a kind of a, a kept harlot or anything like that, although there are indeed kept harlots. is another matter which needs to be addressed. You know, what happened to the harlots? You know, if women want to be in a certain manner, you know, that's always been an option since the dawn of time and, and I do have to remember that Jesus Christ had really had two har has two harlots in his lineage if it is true as many believe that uh, Rahab from Jericho was an harlot and if it is true that she is part of the genealogy of Jesus Christ I understand that there might be some contention about these matters but um, Judah, of course, uh, lay with his uh, daughter-in-law, believing her to be an harlot. And the issue from that union um, is certainly in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. I'm trying to remember the name. Is it Tamara? So the position of a harlot basically is a is a is a royal position. Is a we should we should be careful how we speak of certain things. And again, it's not something that women will do. But there are some women, of course, that who are very loose with their morals, but they don't get paid for their services. And really, a payment is some is a is a contract, and it it to some extent it purifies it. You see, you're no longer. Um, trading sensual pleasure for love you are selling a service actually you see some some i i, I had the good fortune to speak to a, a lady who'd, who'd been a long-term um, harlot herself and she had been instrumental in setting up a women's cooperative of, uh, of um, prostitution and uh, getting a level of representation in Parliament and this, that and the other. And uh, 
she dealt with, she said it was not uncommon for a relationship before to form between uh, a young lady and a long-term uh, um, affectionate client, which could, of course, seek into marriage at a certain point. It's rather romantic, isn't it? A beautiful story. I don't know how many times such a thing happens. I suppose you would be very, very discreet about your wife's um, previous occupation anyway, so you would hardly want to put it on the internet. You know. I do suspect it happens, and it's it's a, such a tender thing, is it not, to, to imagine such a thing. So, yeah, I think things have been mixed up a little bit, and I think, you know, my brothers, really, you need to understand, you know, women are not your friends. They're not your mates. They're women. And you better be careful how you behave around them and treat them with great respect, as I'm, I think most people do. All people do, really. But uh, they need to be shown and given to understand that they have a place in the world, as do we. They do have a place in the world, and we have to be careful when they wish to move into other realms. Because if we read the Bible and we're careful about who we're reading about, it's quite clear that some of these strong, independent women were absolute um, hellcats, um, wrought great destruction and devastation in the land, and could never be... Um, as it were, uplifted by the hand of God, because they were in rebellion from the word go. Uh, Abigail, of course, immediately after her great act of heroism, became David's wife, and so was brought into subjection once again, biblically. Um, David's Haramism is another matter, of course, and you know, let none cast the first stone, as uh, Jesus Christ taught us. But it's a very interesting subject, is it not, of this? And it's not really much discussed, of course. It's a sensitive topic. And as I said, the church, unfortunately, starts to fall over its feet, trying to justify what are biblical principles, but we're not really understanding the power and the beauty and the grace of women. Not understanding, you see. Once you start messing up roles and that, you lose something of the true role. Is that not the case? Good morning.